So here we have one of my favorite questions in uh, this point of the semester. Identify the relationship between these two molecules, between these two drawings. And we generally we have five choices that we can label them as. We can label them as the same or identical. We can label them as completely different. Constitutional isomers, meaning they have the same formula, but the connectivity is different. We could call them enantiomers, meaning they are identical in all respects, except that one is a non-superimposable mirror image of the other. Or they could be diastereomers, where they have some but not all of their uh, stereocenters swapped as we go between them. Uh, diastereomers are stereoisomers. That means they're connected the same, but they differ in three-dimensional nature in some of their chirality centers, but not all of them. If they differed in all of them, we'd have enantiomers. So let's look at this and see how I would go about solving this problem. The first thing I want to do is determine if they have the same formula. If they don't have the same formula, then they're different molecules. I can label them as such and move on. And to do this, I'm not going to count carbons really or hydrogens, but I'm going to observe certain patterns. So the way I do this is to recognize that there is a seven carbon chain right here. It's got an OH group, it's got a methyl group, and it's got an ethyl group. If I can say that same sequence of groups about the other molecule, then they have the same formula. So let's find the longest chain here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. But if I count this methyl, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I still have a seven carbon chain. And I have an OH group, I've got a methyl group, I've got an ethyl group. So I'm pretty convinced that they have the same formula. So these are not different. Now, I can rule out constitutional isomers by recognizing that they have the same groups in the same positions. If I look, if I count from the leftmost carbon on my seven carbon chain, I have an OH on the second carbon. I have that here. I've got a methyl on the third carbon. I have that here. And I've got an ethyl on the fifth carbon, and I have that here. So they are not, they are not constitutional isomers. So that leaves the same molecule, that leaves enantiomers or diastereomers. Uh, and sometimes we can look at them and say, oh, these are clearly mirror images of each other. Um, and I can say that about these two carbons. These two chirality centers are clearly flipped as we look between the left and the right drawing. Right? So they might be enantiomers if this one is also flipped, but it's drawn in such a way that it's not easy to tell. So what I need to do is establish the absolute configuration at this carbon and then I'll know whether all three stereocenters were flipped or just two were flipped. So I'm going to have uh, enantiomer or diastereomer are going to be my likely uh, outcome here. So let's assign stereochemistry. One, two, three. I'll put the hydrogen there, but we don't have to draw that. And of course you saw that I ch decided between the two carbon groups based on this one has a branch and this is a methyl. And so if I count one, two, three, the hydrogen is away from me. This is an R stereocenter. I can use those same assignments on the right side because they're the same group. So one, uh, this would be three, uh, this carbon group would be two, and the hydrogen, which would be right here, is four. And I can count one, two, three, and I'm counting in the counterclockwise direction, so this is S, right? And if I observe that this stereocenter is flipped as I go from left to right, and this stereocenter is flipped as I go from left to right, and I've gone from R to S on my first stereocenter, these are both, or I'm sorry, not both, but they are definitely a pair of enantiomers. So with practice, you can do that a little quicker than the three and a half minutes it took me right here, uh, but that's how I would start this process. Let's look at another example. Here is an interesting example where it's going to be rather challenging to uh, quickly identify whether or not they are enantiomers, but we can work through this. So we have a Newman projection on the left side and a somewhat standard skeletal line structure on the right side. And let me go ahead and identify the carbon bearing the OH with a green dot. And I'm gonna put that same green dot here. And let's see if we have the same three groups attached to that carbon bearing the green dot. Because first thing I wanna do is establish that I have similar, or I have uh, equal chemical formulas. So if I look at the green dot, I've got an OH, H, and a methyl. I've got an OH, uh, the H isn't drawn, but it's there, and a methyl. So I have the same functional groups on the uh, green dot. And I picked that out, of course, because that's where the OH is. So let's draw a circle around here 
and pretend that that is the same circle as right here. So we have a uh, blue circle for our back carbon. Let's see what's attached to that. The back carbon is ethyl, H, and chlorine. And here is ethyl, the H is not drawn, and the chlorine. So I have the same functional groups or the same groups around here. So I have, uh, I do not have different molecules. And it appears they're connected the same because I had the same three things on the green dot and the same three things on the blue circle. So I don't have any constitutional isomers here. I'm probably going to have uh, identical or enantiomers or maybe diastereomers. So one way we could solve this would be to assign stereochemical configuration to our two chirality carbons. We've got those laid out on the right side here. It's a little harder to assign that in this case. Uh, I think a better way to solve this might be to redraw that in a skeletal line structure. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to say that the hydrogen is up. I'm going to draw from this direction. So I could draw it like that. And then I would have the OH. Uh, let me move that arrow here. It's getting a little close. Um, so if the hydrogen is up, the OH would be back, and the methyl would be forward. And then for the back carbon, I've got the ethyl down, the H would be back, and the chlorine would be towards us in this viewpoint. Uh, does that help me? Um, not really. It's still kind of hard for me to see which is which. With practice, I think you could, you could then use your head, uh, use your visualization skills in your mind to figure out which of these um, is, uh, which chir chirality centers might have been flipped, which might not have. I'm going to predict that the blue circle has been flipped. Uh, that's what I'm gonna predict, but we'll prove it uh, with some, um, some information here. And I think I need to put a hydrogen here. There we go. You're probably sitting at home wondering why I got two methyls on that green carbon. Um, can I predict the front or the green carbon? Yes, I'm going to predict that the green carbon is the same stereochemistry. So I think we have diastereomers, but let's prove it here. And your goal should be to work your way up to being able to do what I just did in my mind. Um, so let's assign stereochemistry to the, the green dotted carbon on both uh, compounds. The hydrogen is number four, the OH is number one, the methyl is number three, and the rest of the molecule, which would be the blue circle, is number two. Um, I think I need to rotate a little bit. If I rotate this, it's going to be a little easier. So let's do some rotation. I'm going to rotate the hydrogen into the plane. I'm sorry, into the where the OH is. The OH comes forward, and the methyl is up in the plane. And if I have one two, three, four, I have S configuration right there. I could do the same thing up here, one, two, three, and you may have recognized that I actually, when I redrew my purple molecule, I put them into the same uh, positions as my original black molecule. So this is also S. So the green dot is the same configuration. So now our, our possibilities have narrowed down to identical, if the blue dot, uh, blue circle is uh, the same, or diastereomers if the blue circled carbon is different. So let's switch back to blue. I will assign um, some stereochemistry here, and let me try to erase this uh, two here, because that's gonna get in the way a little bit. So the fourth priority, of course, is the hydrogen. The top priority is going to be the chlorine. The methyl is number three, as most methyls are, and then we have priority number two, which is the green dot and the hydrogen is already away from me, I can count one, two, three. That is also the S configuration. Let's do the same analysis on the black drawing above. Um, I think I actually forgot, a, forgot to make that into an ethyl. Uh, it's still priority three, so that doesn't change anything. Uh, but let's look at the black molecule above. One, three, four, and two. So again, I can count one, two, three, uh, and this has the opposite configurations. This is R. Um, so let's just uh, summarize that. This would be an S comma R configuration, 
and this one is the S comma S configuration. We can put that over here. So using having this Newman projection makes it a bit more challenging, of course, but uh, it's still solvable. And because we have we've flipped one, but not all of our stereocenters, diastereomers is the correct analysis here for uh, this pair of compounds.